Tony told the old man to tell me to tell you. Mm -hmm. It's what it is. Guys, this is Bankai reporting live from the Nexus and today we're talking Martin Scorsese's The Irishman, a feature film detailing the events that led to the disappearance and supposed murder of mob affiliate Jimmy Hoffa. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you will immediately realize this one is a little different. Well, maybe more than a little. I mean, I love cinema and I love video games, so I thought, why not mash the two of them together and give you guys something really special? Second thought, maybe it's not special at all. I mean, maybe you guys will think this whole idea is shit. Feel free to let me know in the comments. By the way, if this is not your first time here, maybe it's about time you subscribe. And don't forget the sub button's friend, that little bell. Just go ahead and give him a click. Thanks. Big warning, by the way, guys. Major spoilers incoming. Heavy, heavy spoilers. So unless you've watched the film or you just don't care, proceed no further. Anyway, I want to jump right into it. One thing you guys will get to learn about me is that I am very passionate about my movies, alright? Movies and PvP. PvP is competitive gaming for you cinema buffs who don't game and happen up on this video wondering who is this prick mixing cinema talk with kid shit. Back to my point, I love cinema and as an avid cinema lover, I have tremendous respect for Martin Scorsese. But to be honest, going into this film guys, I was completely prepared to hate on it. And there's a few reasons for that. When I heard it, to be honest, my first thought was, okay, Scorsese is making a mob movie? Again? He's working with De Niro and Pesci? Again? It's based on a true story? Again? I mean, De Niro has starred so many mob-related movies working with Scorsese that he went from being the main star who's Italian to the main star who's English to the main star who's Jewish and now he's the main star who's Irish. I mean, the only thing left for him to play now is the main star who happens to be from an alien race and wields lightsabers in a galaxy far, far away. Anyway, what is the Irishman about, in case you live under the thickest rock on whatever hemisphere you reside? The Irishman follows Frank Sheeran, an Irish gangster who has ties with the Italian mob and ends up forming close relationships with many mobsters and their affiliates, namely one, Russell Buffalino, and of course, Jimmy Hoffa himself. All of that said, guys, I gave the film a chance and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was hilarious. It was tense. It was even emotional for me, guys. And you know why? Because to me, this film wasn't about the mob or even violence that much. Not really. To me, the biggest themes in this film were friendship, love, and betrayal. I'm not sure if that's right. I don't even know if that's what Scorsese was thinking when he wrote the thing. I mean, I don't even quite care, to be honest. These are the things I want to zero in on because I find most regular review formats to be boring and I'm sure you go around YouTube getting that stuff all the time. The plot this, the music that, uh, whatever. Let's really get into the soul of this film, guys. I mean, I'll talk about music and so on in some reviews as well, but with this film, what stood out to me were these themes and how well the acting and the slow unfurling narrative drove them home like a screwdriver through a living skull. After Jimmy Hoffa, the head of the Teamsters Union, gets himself all tied up with the mob thanks to his, um, detractors, as he would put it, according to this film anyway, his deeds somewhat catch up to him and he ends up doing a five-year stint in, um, school, as they call it. Uh, <laughs> I found that so funny, by the way. Uh, it sounds like something we would actually say here in my country, but I'm pretty sure we said that. Do we say that? Uh, who knows? Anyway, he does his stint and when he comes home, he demands to take back control of his union. And this is where things get tricky, guys, alright? You see, Jimmy had slight issues with a few mobsters before going away. He even used racial slurs against them in the past before his jail time. And let's just say, when he comes home, some people did not forget. You know the Italians are very proud people. And besides, that's the kind of thing, you know, not to forget. So all these issues, coupled with Jimmy's reluctance to let go of getting back control of the union, lead to tensions between him and the mob, and even his close friends, Frank and Russell. I mean, there is a scene where Jimmy and Tony Pro, one of his mob affiliates, is having a meeting about the whole thing, you know, the past bad blood and all of that. And Tony Pro shows up late and doesn't care, you know. And Jimmy, even though he was no longer as powerful, Jimmy wasn't having it. When apparently he should have had it. Uh, because, you know, that's how the game goes. He should have just played it cool. Playing ball is what they call it. But, you know, Jimmy and Lee Daniels aren't made of the same stuff, guys. Alright? So Frank Sheeran and another mobster is there at this meeting and guys the tension is so thick it was palpable, it was hard to watch. 
Jimmy is just there being so hard headed and the mob was so offended you're just there looking thinking to yourself I already know this guy dies at the end of the film but even if I didn't it is so obvious this whole thing is just going to go to shit you know how the mob feels about meetings guys they are very very professional gentlemen and they're not going to have the foolishness ladies and gentlemen this is where the acting and the atmosphere of the film become classic Scorsese the range of emotions communicated by De Niro throughout the deterioration of Frank and Jimmy's friendship is so tremendous, so, so exceptional, guys. I'm telling you, De Niro is a fucking legend. Of course, I don't have to tell you that. I mean, the man's Robert fucking De Niro. He's the taxi driver, damn it. All right? Throughout the entire act that involved his trying to sway Jimmy to leave the whole thing alone and to play nice was just captivating to me. His tiptoeing around the mob, being mad at Jimmy, and you know trying to bring everyone together it was stupendous work it was great without Frank ever uttering the words love or anything like that towards Jimmy but it was always there in his eyes guys Robert De Niro does a lot of acting with his eyes in this movie you know and I love it I just can't believe these guys are still so good from Scorsese to Pesci to Pacino to De Niro they all did a marvelous job here I was thoroughly impressed and trust me, you're hearing this from a man who has watched pretty much everything from De Niro's prime. I think De Niro from 72 to like uh, 81 is quite possibly the greatest actor to have ever lived. Perhaps not technically, not on a technical level, right? But in terms of the emotional heft of his work, definitely. But back to this film. The sequence that leads up to Frank uh, throwing away his and Jimmy's friendship once the decision had been made that Jimmy was beyond help. It was really heartbreaking stuff, guys, all right? After they set up the house, Frank was meant to uh, paint, hint, hint, and they called Jimmy for a final meeting. When Jimmy steps into that house and puts two and two together, right? Then he turns on his heels, telling Frank they should go. Even then, even then, Jimmy suspects nothing from Frank because they're friends. They're friends. He would never expect that. He would never expect Frank to be the one to kill him. That's the kind of friendship they had. And then Frank does it, guys, right? He pops him in the back of the head. I have to comment on Scorsese's decision to draw out the lead up to the deed, but not draw out the actual deed itself. That was really brilliant. The killing was so quick, it was worse than a slow death. It was so sudden and so final and so terrible. To watch such a great character's life be snuffed out so easily, it was sad stuff, man. It was sad stuff, all right? Very effective directing and writing and acting. And the heartbreak in Frank's face, um, from that moment on for the rest of the film a man who supposedly lost the understanding of the value of human life I'm sorry guys this movie is almost purely about friendship to me you know maybe I'm slow maybe I'm just weird like that I don't know but friendship was all I could think about when the film was over tarnished friendship and the ugly stain it leaves on a person's soul I recall one of the last conversations between Frank and um, Russell Buffalino when they're in prison Russell remembers Jimmy and says to Frank, it was either him or us. But Russell was not very convincing here. I don't mean the acting. The acting was great. I mean the character himself. He seemed to be trying to convince himself that the deed was worth it. And the silence from Frank and his reluctance to ever speak on it again just speaks volumes. Like maybe we did a thing. And maybe it was better we left that thing alone. And then they all proceed to die uh, lonely deaths in school. Well, no, Frank gets out and lives a lonely life in society, but I mean, school, jail, society, it's all the same thing, guys. Anyway, that's my two cents on this film. I would give you a more detailed video, but it's getting really late and I've got work in the morning, so that's too bad. In the meantime, please like this video, go ahead and give it a share, and while you're here, you might as well subscribe. Until next time, guys. Bang. Kai.